press the bell icon on the YouTube app and never miss another update from All India Bakchod. All right, so we are with Colin Mockery and Mr. Brad Sherwood. All of you, uh, I'm sounding like a radio host. I don't know why. <laughs> the PR team has given us two questions. We will get that out of the way very quickly. The first question is, how do you relax? Uh, we like to relax and unwind by having black dog easy evenings. Sparkling water. We bathe in it. Yes. <laughs> I, yeah. yeah. I'm actually soaking my feet in it under the table right, right now. I think uh, the PR team is already very happy. Are you guys done? Are you, are you good? Do you need us to plug it more? Oh. So even in America, what we want to know is that what was the improv scene before Who's Line and what happened after Who's Line became big? You know, most people didn't really know of it as a comedy form uh, unless they had stumbled into a comedy club or had known a group that performed in college. And then when it came on the air on ABC in the United States, all of a sudden everybody found out about it. And then it was in schools and they were teaching it in drama classes and kids all wanted to be in an improv group and went from something no one had ever heard of to, oh, now everybody knows that that's something in a addition to stand-up that you can go see when you want to see comedy. Like when I grew up, the only improviser I sort of knew of was Jonathan Winters. He was basically uh, the only one, and then Robin Williams came along. But Whose Line, as you said, brought that uh, out into the open and gave us a chance to have a job that didn't exist when we grew up. <laughs> yeah. I remember this specifically when the first Whose Line uh, was being broadcast. I remember like a couple of friends of mine who used to treat it like they were watching wrestling. Because they were like, there is no way this is being made up on yeah, the spot. That's true. Yeah. They had that same sort of disbelief almost. Mm-hmm. Because yeah. as an art form, it wasn't known either. Right. Mm-hmm. Did you Have you ever gotten that like in different still, countries? That still, you, oh, still wait, to this day. Wait, it's frustrating. I mean, it's a compliment. To, yeah. It's a compliment uh, and an way. insult at the same time. It's like saying, you could not be that talented to make me laugh that hard with just your own genius brain. <laughs> <laughs> and at the same time, they're also saying, so I think you're a liar. Yeah, you know, and it's like it's a, really yeah. is that really? It's weird because they, they I think their process is you know I can't do that, so you can't do that. Yeah, they also don't understand how lazy we are <laughs> to have scripts for every possible scenario that may come our way. That's a lot of work. Yeah, uh, if you actually transcribed whose line scenes and try to do them as sketches, they wouldn't work. They, they wouldn't, wouldn't be work funny. at all because yeah. they're just of the moment. They were that particular audience and what we did at that time. So, uh, it's real. It's real. <laughs> the same thing we were talking about, like, when it comes to different formats of improv, do you feel that same thing exists with uh, comics and stand-up? Most stand-ups don't like improv because they can't do it. Yeah. And a lot of people just respect improv because... <laughs> All right. Because they feel... Yeah, and, and a lot of people feel like it's kind of like a party game because mm-hmm. it's so loosey-goosey. The other problem is if you go see a bad... Uh, improv group, you might never go back and see improv again. If you go see a bad stand-up, you don't go, well, I'm never going to go see stand-ups again. You just (laughs) go, that guy was bad. So it's almost like the whole reputation of improv lies with that first time you ever (laughs) see it, whether you're going to go back. Yeah. You know? What is really interesting is that we have like very weird regulation when it comes to free speech. Right. So technically, if you do stand up in India, you have to get your script cleared by a sense board, which means inherently all improv in India is illegal yeah. because there's no script being cleared by the sense board. I don't know if you have those licenses to do <laughs> improv. Should you bring that up now? <laughs> no, because it's a weird, it's a weird thing, right? It is. No, it's it's because people don't even the government doesn't even consider stand up an art form. For them, even that's new. So try explaining improv to a cop. That yeah. so bad a lot of people. We did a show in North America for their subscription series, which it was a matinee. The average age was deceased. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it was in Florida. I think we that as a matinee. Yeah, it, it, it was in that. Florida. And um, one of the at the intermission, one of the uh, crew came back, kind of laughing to himself, saying, uh, "I just passed two of the old ladies who said it's just like they're making it up as they go along." <laughs> That is literally the law. Yes, of the show. this is what we. Yes, we've explained that. This is why we're getting suggestions from people. And normally, people that come see our show are people that know the show and who we are. These people just came to the theater because they have a subscription to go see whatever is there. So, if we had been trained dogs or spinning plates or gymnasts, they would have been there as well. So, you know, it was a little bit of a 
strange experience for them. First time we came here uh, six years ago, we were a little. Uh, not scared, but it was like, well, uh, a little nervous. Or, you know, there is. How would we be? It is incredibly different culture. Will they understand? Really, and we were told that uh, whose line was very big in the day, but people have lied to us before, <laughs> <laughs> often. Um, but then, for our very first suggestion, uh, we got fart. And then we thought, yeah. all right, these, <laughs> we are thought, fine. All right, these are our people. <laughs> yeah. Do you know a lot of corporate shows as well? Yeah. yeah. Is it is it soul crushing for you as well, or, or do they oh, usually no, go? No, it's very. Um, we we found. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what it is. We go in. Uh, the people that hired us are excited to have us. The people that are going to see us have no idea we're going to yeah. be there, and so we have to go in there, kind of like into the Colosseum against the lion. The best that we ever come, we always come out. The best is. Uh, that wasn't too bad. Yeah. That's the best we can hope for. Yeah. We've, I mean, we've had good, really good corporate, we've had corporate shows where we got standing ovations. Oh, wow. And, you know, we're, we're always just happy if they oh, wow. stop eating their steak. Yeah. You know, so. <laughs> I don't think we've got uh, yeah, corporate shows or improv so far. I don't, I don't think a huge audience even knows that improv comedy is a thing. Like, they know whose yeah. line is it anyway happens. Right. Oh, that happened on TV, but we got Indian standard comedians. But that's it. It's, it's still it does take a while. I remember starting with Theater Sports and we were uh, grabbing people out of the McDonald's next door just to come and see the show and it took uh, a couple of years before it really uh, took off and then you know it's like anything it takes a while the, the other thing is in improv you tend to it's a, just more positive even if it's, uh, the scene is about a negative subject yeah. because you're working together and to do really well, good improv you're supposed to over accept what that person is saying and then use it and yeah, so it's kind of uplifting and positive even though whatever the subject matter is yeah. whereas stand-ups talk about how stupid everything in the world is and why do people do it this way and I think that's dumb and I wouldn't do it that way yeah so, what's with that so, it, so, so it, 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 you know stand-ups tend to come from a judgmental place unless there's a stand-up that they just play their own weird little character right. you know like an Emo Phillips or I don't know if you guys know Emo Phillips but yeah. uh, you, you know where you just do it or Bob Goldthwaite or whatever uh, but the, most, most people are talking about stuff from a negative standpoint right. so people that make their living judging and uh, observing the world through negative eyes are certainly going to look at a bunch of people going okay let's work together and come up with a funny idea as a bunch of annoying jackasses that's why I get that all the time yes. yeah. I, I, I feel, feel you out of me yeah. Yeah. I feel well, it's like um, you don't feel for us we're really up. successful <laughs> actually getting paid to do it so you can't feel bad for us but there are millions of other improvisers yeah. who are incredibly disrespected all yeah. the time <laughs> all right and on that note, thank you very much Colin thank you very much for having this pleasure thank, thank you, you.